Hey everybody, GC13 here. Craig of the Creek is definitely an outdoor series, but despite that, there's a distinctly indoor kid who's made her mark. I am, of course, talking about Stax, our local bookworm and aspiring librarian. Let's not sell Stax short here, though. While the towering shells of the library are her natural habitat, and her skills have proven an asset to Kelsey and her friends time and again, she's more than just some bookworm spending all of her time inside. She's proven herself to be not just a true friend, but a noble quester as well. We first meet Stax in the final book. We learn that she does book reports in exchange for candy, and we learn that she's the kid to see if you need the scoop on what's going on at the library. Desperate to find the final book in the Yithrith of Scrigeth series, Kelsey turns to her for aid. Kelsey turns down the chance to begin the sci-fi series Trials of Trebulon, and while the stump kids go off searching for the book in a wild goose chase, a bit of advice from the smarty boys brings them to their real culprit, Stax. Should've listened to Bernard. Stax isn't some library-themed villain, though. Yes, she hid the final book from Kelsey, but only because she feared having no one else to talk about books with once Kelsey finished it. Her secret exposed, she gives the final book to Kelsey, and Kelsey commits to giving the Trials of Trebulon a try when she's done. Try it she does, by the way. In fact, she enjoys it so much she shares it with Craig and JP, giving a dramatic reading that would entertain anyone. Unfortunately, while Craig and JP enjoy being read to, they don't enjoy reading so much. When Kelsey reads Veronica and the Time Spoon, she loves it, but since neither Craig nor JP want anything to do with reading it, she has to turn elsewhere to find someone to talk about it with. It turns out that Stax has been too busy with her book report writing business to read it, but she does give a deflated Kelsey an idea. If the book were a secret, maybe Craig and JP would be interested. Together, Kelsey and Stax found Secret Book Club and recruit Craig and JP. The plan works. Almost flawlessly. While Craig and JP were both into Veronica and the Time Spoon, the pressure of keeping the book a secret meant they couldn't actually read it. When Paintball Benny becomes convinced Craig is an enemy spy, Stax and Kelsey both know what must be done. Kelsey must give up the secret of Secret Book Club to protect library property. Fear not, though. Everything ends well for Secret Book Club. After Craig and JP talk up the joys of reading, Paintball Benny decides to read Veronica himself, and the episode ends with him eagerly participating in another meeting of Secret Book Club. Now, when a kid loves reading, she's not that far from wanting to try her hand at writing. When Kelsey finishes her own book, Stax doesn't just love it, she helps her turn it into an official, unofficial library book, complete with its own scannable barcode. She even completes a work of her very own to add to the Herkelton Public Library shelves. Of course, not all kids love books, and not all librarians like it when unofficial books make their way into the library system. The stunt almost costs the gang their library cards, but some tough negotiation from Craig saves their precious cards. What's more? Harold's sarcasm gives Kelsey and Stax another idea, and their official, unofficial books become official, official books. Who needs office buildings? Stax doesn't let being an official author go to her head. When the stump kids need help solving the mystery of a haunted dollhouse, naturally she's the one to help them go through the microfilm of old newspapers to get the answers they need. She's also the one Kelsey takes Wildernessa to in order to identify the animal she's been tracking, and Stax's encyclopedic knowledge of the library's contents gives them their answer again. A ferret. Wildernessa is firmly an outdoor kid, and while the library is anathema to her, she finds Stax to be a valuable member of her quest to return this ferret to its native habitat. Not only does she let Stax ride on cheese sticks, she tells her her backstory. Stax and Wildernessa even speak to each other in Spanish about their stuffed animals. Stax used to read to hers before she even knew how to read, and Wildernessa made hers fight one another. The two get along so well, in fact, that Kelsey begins to feel jealous. With her two friends becoming friends with each other, she's been cut out of her own quest. While Stax is understandably hurt that her sudden inclusion in something for once angered Kelsey, after Craig catches the ferret, Kelsey is able to come to grips with her feelings, and the united group departs to return Elder Mark II to his owner. With Stax finally having questing experience, it was only natural that she would continue to use these new skills along with her old talent for researching. Having read all of the old Game Master's journals, she catches on to a hidden code that sends the team on one final mission for the summer. Like any true team, everyone gets their moment in this mission. Faced with a cryptic clue, Stax knows what to do. Take a look. It's in a book. The mission is definitely dangerous, as one would expect of something so intimately tied to such a devastating war, but Stax has the reflexes to make it to the other side in one piece. With summer drawing to a close, she's able to stand tall. Though it probably doesn't hurt that the return of school means her book report business is about to pick up again. See? Stax is more than just an indoor kid. She's already succeeded on two quests, and she's friends with the most outdoor kid around, Wildernessa. What was your favorite Stax moment so far? What new adventures do you think she'll get into with the return of school? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it.
Dislike it if you didn't, and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more cartoon videos.